and welcome to our daily space weather supplemental. We've got a little bit of a different audio sort of a thing going on. This one's entitled X-Class Flare to end all of civilization and YouTube careers. Just kidding, folks. We don't expect it to end all civilization or YouTube careers. And I'd like to introduce our special guest. I think it's the first time he's been on the Daily Space Weather Supplemental video. Eugene Bagashoff, Eugene the Philosopher. How's it going, Eugene? Hey, hello everyone. I'm doing, well, fine, I guess. That's not what the Americans are supposed to say, right? You're all like super happy every, every time, etc. But yeah, in Europe, we're a little bit more dull, so I would say fine. Well, you're supposed to be bleak because you're in Belarus, and then we're happy because it's a holiday weekend. Happy Independence Day weekend, Eugene. Tomorrow's yeah, the 4th. Yes, so. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, in you. I mean, in the U.S. it's the 4th of July, yeah, but in my country we also have technically what is called Independence Day, which is literally today, on 3rd of July, but it, uh, factually it's the date when the Soviet uh, forces uh, re have retaken the uh, Minsk, the capital, so from the Nazis, I mean, in 1944, so it's not really an Independence Day in my estimation, but whatever, that's what we have. All right. Fair enough. Well, the sun has gotten started a little bit earlier with some fireworks. So we saw two M-class flares and an X-class flare happen in the past few, uh, I'll say the past 24 hours. I uh, didn't do the math exactly. And that's what we're showing some imagery of right now. I know you can't see my screen, Eugene, but I'm showing a composite imagery here from the SDO browse data. And uh, yeah, so we saw an X-class flare, which was the first one of the entire solar cycle, which cycle 25 started arguably in mid-November of the year 2019. What are your thoughts on the X-class flare on the suddenly appearing sunspot in the northwest limb that probably won't even get a name? I don't think it got a name, did it? Uh, it actually did, and I, w I was also tracking this situation. Like, I made a couple of posts about this uh, in my blog, like when the first M flare appeared, M2.7, on 7.18 UTC, that is... Um, 13 hours ago about so so i made one post and uh there was another x flare at 1429 UTC. i made another post etc etc so yeah i was tracking the naming of the sunspot because i wanted to you know show my expert's opinion so to speak but i didn't find any so during the first M flare, there was no naming of this area at all. It was not even considered like an active region, right? But uh, during or after the X flare, we've had the name and it was 2838. So ah, that's okay. the official, official title from now on. Okay. Yeah, I was not aware that that one actually did get a name. Let me, let me see if it shows up here on the ASSA detected sunspots the Integrated Space Weather Analysis Center thing. This will usually show a sunspot number. Nope, it just shows active region and that it's alpha class. <laughs> it certainly looked beta class to me. So anyway, uh, I want to show some imagery here from the uh, Stereo A coronagraph. As we did see a coronal mass ejection, it looks entirely westward of the Earth. So right now we're displaying some imagery for both for Eugene and the viewers of the Stereo A coronagraph, which is located at the Grange Point 5. Um, and then, so here's the view from the, the Soho Lasco C2, which is located at the Grange Point 1, showing all ejecta appearing to head off to the west. Here's the C3 showing that same data, basically from a zoomed out position. Um, and again, we were joking and clickbaiting the title because after all, this is YouTube. And I'm pretty sure we're required to put up silly clickbaity titles on YouTube. What say you, Eugene, about silly nonsense on YouTube videos, especially about things like the sun? Uh, I actually think that, yeah, like previously I underrated like the value of the, the proper title and especially the thumbnail. Like so in my recent like, couple of videos, I, I tried to put in a thumbnail like the very gist of the video like maybe a couple of sentences or a couple of pictures and i intend to continue on and actually would 
kind of revamp my older videos with the same style when I would have the time. So, like, it's silly and it's kind of disgusting on some level. Yeah. But I think... at the same time, you have to do it to some degree because if you have like super vague video titles that don't really immediately relay your message or right. you know, thumbnails that don't really say anything then people would be extremely confused and even if a random person <laughs> that would otherwise be actually interested in what you have to say encounters such a recommendation with this thumbnail and video title they may not even you know click on it because they don't know what you're have to say about it exactly so, yeah you know we're, we're always so fighting so, the battle on our channel whether whether we want to put too much information or not enough information in the title and the thumbnail so it constantly wrestling say, with that i would say give as much as possible and like the most condensed version of what you have to say that would be the best but this is my estimation i mean i have like 300 under 300 subscribers so i'm not in any way an expert so Whatever. And on that note, I think everybody ought to subscribe to Eugene the Philosopher, which really isn't anything about. I mean, it's there. There do there do come up uh, science subjects when he's talking about sort of the the hierarchy, the structure of science, and things like that. Uh, one of my favorite ones that he's ever made, actually, is this most recent one here. Uh, and the thumbnail, a perfect example of what we were just talking about, actually, here. Uh, the thumbnail says China is overrated in giant yellow letters, and then the title is Paper Tiger, because China is one. Another thing on which Eugene and I agree. Even if Eugene and I hated each other, we seem to agree on enough things that we ought to act like we like each other. Yeah, so, so yeah, well, this is a good example. Again, the title doesn't say much. Like, it's a very, like, convoluted sort of a metaphor. So I had to clarify in the thumbnail what I mean, and like what the video is about, and and half so of the things, half of the things you said in that video, I've already said to our viewers who can probably confirm a lot of the stuff, I've already said. I mean, I liked when you went into the history of China because I, I didn't really think about uh, what you said about how young China is. You know, that's a thing that I think a lot of people will overlook. The youth of China. It's only been around since what 1947. Well, 49, Something like that. 49. But again, like everything since the downfall of the, the emperor in 1911 up until again 1949 is so fog of war ish. Like you cannot distinguish anything there. Fog of so, war ish. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, because... it was like those guys attacking are attacking these guys. And then, like, for some reason, Maoists control all the cities, but everything around the cities is controlled by the like these the, these other guys and it's like it's just it's such a fairy tale it's just impossible to read through exactly like, like I, I have, it, it reads like a, you know old testament or even something worse like where it's just like this guy has given birth to that guy then they went to war <laughs> and then everything exploded then the sun stood still then there were like lightning bolts and firing bushes and <laughs> no one understands a thing there and yeah I mean just have a very like sober and skeptical approach to it like okay what was the real interested parties well there were a bunch of oh, okay I mean this is a serious uh, diversion towards the topic so let's maybe just end it here yeah let's anybody anyway everybody just watch Eugene's video about how China is overrated and that it's a paper tiger well let's run through the uh, the imagery here again uh, here's the Lasco C3. Here's the Lasco C2. You can see all ejecta appears to be missing Earth to the west there in terms of its trajectory. There could still be some ejecting. And there could be additional things happening here as Sunspot 2836 is moving out of the Earth-facing quiet zone. Also, Eugene and I do have a video planned soon uh, about why the limbs of the sun appear brighter in X-ray and why sunspots are dark, so make sure you check out that once we put it out we haven't even recorded it yet but that's sort of in the works we did see a small spike in the proton flux here as well so uh, the proton flux is almost up to 10 to the zeroth power here instead of 10 to the negative 1.9th power or something like that uh, it's not a significant proton event yet but it looks like there's a tiny signal associated with that solar flare coronal mass ejection sort of a situation happening there 
Uh, yeah, by and the way, I just uh, sent into the chat of Zoom uh, the link where you can see the like the naming of the sunspot. Even though it's like an amateur uh, solar space weather type of site, but uh, it's pretty credible in my opinion. So ah. you may check it out. Okay, and guess what? There's another flare has just subsided now. It didn't quite make the C-class range, but this happens all the time in the channel. Here's some more imagery of the sun in 94 angstroms. Um, yeah, so that's, that's about it. We just wanted to do a supplemental video here since uh, we saw the largest flare of cycle 25 so far happen. And we wanted to show you some great imagery of that. Thanks for tuning in, uh, viewers. Again, don't forget to subscribe wait, to wait. YouTube. I mean, you, you should give some context, you know, like the typical media message is this happened. The now you're going to die. Block. Wait, wait, I'm, I'm going to give you a lesson. Like, <laughs> All right. any, sort of, any sort of classical like media message should, should go like this. So first block is this happened. Then the second block is this is what it means. Like what exactly has happened, if you like. And the third block is what it means in the context. Like, ha has this happened before? Has this ha will this happen again? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, we've already went through the first and the second block pretty much, but there, there's a third one remaining. Like in in context, like is it bad? Is it good? Like is it scary or not? So I think you should mention that it's the first X flare since September 2017, right? So it's pretty significant. So has been four years since last thing like that happened so maybe you should even include that in the, the video title i don't know to make it more quickly and it's it's Whatever. almost it's almost like an appropriate proportional time between the last x flare with respect to the solar cycle it's it's sort of like a, a, a parenthesis on the ramping down and then the ramping back up of solar activity you know the radio flux also has significantly come up here yeah, so if, if you've, if you've, Eugene, if you've got any ideas on, on how, how we should author the title, leave that in the Zoom chat too. We'll consider uh, maybe rewording the title a little bit here, especially since we actually touched on that subject in the video. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, well, no, not really, but probably one thing is that the, the like sunspot peak, like in general, solar activity peak in September of 2017 was actually kind of anomalous. So it should have been actually longer before the last last X flare. But uh, if you look at you know any sort of sunspot dynamic uh, graphs like long term, uh, you would see that 2017 is much like it just goes up through the curve. If you know what I mean, like if you paint like a smooth curve of sunspot number, then yeah. September of 2017 just goes up through this curve, and it's very it looks very strange. And again. Then we had other very strange things happening, like in particular, there was this uh, hypothetically uh, interstellar asteroid, Oumuamua, approaching the sun in September. Uh huh. So it may be connected to this uh, outburst, I know, like this anomalous peak of solar activity, but it's of course a subject of debate and research and things like that, so who knows. But yeah, I'm actually, myself, I'm really surprised that we had an X-Flare that early into the cycle. So uh, I don't know, I haven't done any research, like whether it's actually anomalous or just uh, appears so, but that's a thing to note. So I don't know. All right, well, thanks again for joining us, Eugene, for the uh, da Daily Space Weather Supplemental. I would like to add one more thing, number one, I order you to take a number two. Engage! If you can hear the, by the way, the smash bunkers at warp speed right now, we've decided to leave planet Earth because it's full of too many COVID idiots. And, uh, oh, everybody, don't forget to press like and subscribe on this video, and don't forget to go over to Eugene the Philosopher, and Eugene, feel free to leave any links you'd like in the, uh, in the, in the comments regarding your social media accounts and so on. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Okay. smash o -Mash. Thanks again for joining us, Eugene. We'll see you next time at The Daily Space Weather. Yeah, thank you and all your listeners slash viewers. And have a good time, guys. Goodbye.